Hello, Blake Rudis here with Everyday HDR and HDRinsider.com, and today I want to talk about something really powerful, um, and that's Photoshop for video. Now, a lot of people don't think about Photoshop for video, but Photoshop does, and it's extremely powerful. I mean, we usually think After Effects or um, or some of those other uh, very powerful video editing software by Adobe, but Photoshop has its own um, video editing capabilities to it, and it's extremely powerful. And I didn't figure this out until recently. I bought a um, Panasonic X920 HD camcorder that shoots in an AVC HD file that ends up being a .mts. So for the life of me, I could not figure out how to convert a .mts to a .mp4. Well, I dragged and dropped it into Photoshop after buying many programs, and uh, it, I found out that I can actually edit those right here in Photoshop. So that's what I'm using for that. I also use programs like Camtasia and some other video making software, but let's just check out how powerful Photoshop is for video. First and foremost, you have to get the video into Photoshop. So you can either go to File and you can navigate to it and you can open it that way. I prefer to drag and drop everything into Photoshop, so I'm just going to drag and drop that video right here into Photoshop. All right, so here's where the pucker factor comes in. We've got a new palette down here. It's called the Timeline, and uh, it that anytime you bring something into Photoshop and something new happens, there's an intimidation factor. And the first time I dragged and dropped something here, I was like, uh oh, I did something wrong. I'm out. Peace. But the the thing is, is that there's actually a lot. Um, there's a reason why it brings in the timeline. Because Photoshop, the way it looks at video, it looks at video as a series of still images over the course of a timeline. That's why you have this timeline panel. Photoshop has also uh, allowed you the ability to go up here and click on motion. Uh, in your workspaces, you can click on the motion workspace and that will format your whole Photoshop to be uh, friendly to uh, video editing. All right, so now let's go over some things. We've got our video inside Photoshop. We've got this new timeline. Let's break down the timeline and look at what's going on here. So. Right now, it's it's in frames. Now, this video is 60 frames per second, and here is showing you the amount of frames in the video. Now, you can make that uh, that timeline larger or smaller by going down here, and, and it looks like a mountain here. That's like a zoom in detail. That's how you would zoom in and zoom out like you would in Photoshop into your photograph. Only here, you're zooming in and zooming out to your timeline. All right, so I'm going to zoom into my timeline up to about here. I like to have a nice, comfortable working space. I don't want it to be too close that it's so small, but I don't want it to be so large that I can't see it either. So that's about right. That'll, that'll be good for this video. It's only a minute and 40 seconds long. So the next thing, we have the playhead. That's this guy right here. As we move the playhead along, it's going to be counting those frames, and it's going to be showing us those frames. Now we can press play, and we can watch this video happen. Um, so what this video is, is um, I've been playing with some, I, I want to do some type of um, experiment for this. So this is uh, ink that I've been dropping into water and I did a video of dropping ink into water and there's a reason why I did this because this ink looks really nasty right now but we're going to do some things in Photoshop to make it look super cool. So that's your playhead that allows you to move back and forth throughout the video and play the video. Now at times this is going to get really thick on your computer so you have this resolution slider here. You can change the resolution down to 25 percent. Now it's going to make your video look ugly but it's going to make the processing happen faster. So it's not going to be as taxing on your hard drive when you're going through and you have this set to say 25 percent instead of 100 percent. You'll be able to see this stuff a little bit faster um, in real time but it's not going to be pretty. So when you're Doing your layout, I suggest being in uh, in a lower resolution, but when you actually start applying effects and tweaking the video, I suggest that you go into 100%. So let's go ahead and press stop now. That's our play and stop. You can also, this playhead um, has some power to it because there's a cut tool over here, and if you cut the, if, if you have the playhead here, what it's going to do is it's going to cut wherever, I don't need any of this this beginning stuff. This is all me setting up my ink to be dropped in. So I'm going to cut this about right here. So what I can do is I can press the cut button and that will split the video in half. So what I could do at this point is when I get these disconnected, I could actually put something in between these two videos or I could select this one and delete it. So that's one way you can cut. Another way you can cut is to just go up to where it is that you want to cut out of the video. Now I'm cutting purposely not right to where the yellow comes in but just a little bit before because I'm going to do a fade in. So what you, how you can also cut is to just bring this up over, over here like so and that will cut it for the time being but that's a non-destructive cut so you can always get that information back later.
Okay, so that is our cut. Now you have an audio button here. You can turn the audio on and off. For this video, I did not need the audio on because you can hear me trampling around and you can hear all the inks being dropped into the water. We don't need the audio on. We can add audio later. So now I want to add a transition. Now you have all these different transitions. A crossfade would be something you'd put in between two videos and would kind of fade them into one another. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and fade in the front of this video and then I can also fade in the back of this video. So what that's going to look like now is that the video as we press play is going to just fade right into the video here. Now it's fading. Um, if you saw that fade, it was a fade from a uh, from like a blank slate into the actual video. So I'm actually going to go back and add a different fade. And that's going to be fade with black. So a regular fade, you would have something in, in front of it, maybe a title image that says, hey, this is an ink wash video. And then that would fade from the, the title page into the actual video. So if we say fade with black, what that's going to do is it's going to allow the uh, video to fade in from a black state. So now we have a black video fading in and we're going to see our first ink wash coming in. So that's our fade. Um, the other thing we have here is video groups. Like I said before, vi Photoshop treats video like a series of still images and it puts them into a group. So if you can imagine working on a very large photograph with a lot of layers and you put them in a group, that's essentially what, what Photoshop is doing right away with your video as soon as you import it. You can look over here. See this video group? This video group, when you click on it, it knows that that's this video group down here. So that's going to come into play really important here when I start doing some effects and adding some stuff to this. So first thing when I'm looking at this video is the color balance is horrible. I think that when we, as photographers, when we take a picture or when we take a video, we have this idea in our head of what we want that to look like. And we know what we want it to look like. And then we bring it into our computer and we're like, crap. This looks nothing like I thought it would. And being a photographer, I know that what my camera takes and what my mind thinks are two totally different things. I knew the same was going to happen with my video. I had this idea that these colors were going to be vibrant, the background was going to be pure white, and everything was going to be honky-dory. Well, that's not always the case. And we know that when we do any video or any uh, photo editing, that there's always going to be an element that we're going to have to do to this. So let's start doing that. Let's make this prettier, all right? Because right now, it looks pretty bad. So if I click over here on the group, I can add an adjustment layer to this group just like I would a photograph. So let's first go to Curves, and let's set the white balance. So I know that the background was supposed to be white. I can click on the white eyedropper and click here, and look at that. So now, Photoshop is so intuitive that it knows to place this curves adjustment layer, layer over the entire string of pictures. So look at that. Now we're in, obviously we're in a 25% uh, a resolution here, so it's not going to be that pretty. So the next thing I want to do is actually make my colors a little bit more vibrant. Um, they aren't looking too bad here, but the yellow looks a little green. The red's not as uh, punchy as I want it to be, and the blue um, doesn't look quite like I wanted to. As a matter of fact, I ran out of the vibrant blue ink that I had, so I had to use this darker blue ink. So what I'm going to do now is add another adjustment layer and make that hue saturation. So now I have this ability to adjust the hue and saturation of these colors, and I can use the targeted adjustment tool right here. So if I click on that target adjustment tool and then click on my reds, on that red ink wash, it's going to tell me I'm working in my reds now. All right. So let's increase the saturation a little bit. Um, let's maybe increase the hue a little bit so we can add a little bit more of that blue to it to make it that um, that nice punchy red that I was looking for to begin with. Um, now again, if, if I wanted to, I could change the entire color of this red completely. Uh, that's kind of cool. But I want to keep it red because the whole purpose of this was to um, kind of look at color theory and the different colors of red, blue, and yellow and just how powerful those colors are in our workflow. Um, and that's kind of the idea behind this video. Uh, it's the basis behind everything, right? That's the color wheel. So then I'll click on this blue, and then I will increase the saturation in the blue a little bit. Maybe increase the lightness in the blue a little bit. Uh, actually, let's darken it just a little bit. And then increase the hue in it to get it to be that blue that I wanted it to be instead of the dark blue that it was. So again, there's my before, there's my after. Now I'll do the same thing with the yellows. I will click on the yellows, and let's go to like this portion right here. Let's increase the saturation a little bit, increase the lightness a little bit actually decrease it a little bit, 
I uh, actually increased it and then let's play with the hue so now we have a nice vibrant yellow so let's change our resolution to uh, 100% that'll be good and then press play so now we can see that even though we added one saturation adjustment layer it went for the entire video how cool is that so there's some other things we can also do with video here. Now, what, I'm looking at these, and I had my camera in focus, but you have to think uh, the camera is now shooting into a glass of water. So when it shoots into the glass of water, regardless of how in focus I had it, if there was anything not clear in that water, then it's going to get my, my, uh, my um, colors aren't going to be quite in focus. So you can apply a filter to this series of images just like you would apply a filter to any photograph. So if I click on this layer and then go to filter and then go to um, sharpen, let's go to unsharp mask. I can apply an unsharp mask effect to this entire series of uh, photos essentially that's in this video so I don't want to go too high because if I do it's not only going to un it's not only going to sharpen the uh, the ink here it's also going to sharpen all the noise that I have in the photo as well so let's just take this to about one pixel and then we will increase the sharpness and let's look at our preview and see if it's doing anything for us and it is I don't want to increase it too much though because if I do it's going to increase uh, the the horrible quality of the rest of um, if there's any um, nastiness in the video it's going to bring out that nastiness as far as detail is concerned uh, just like it would in a photograph so being on a white background like this it could get pretty messy so I'm only going to unsharpen it by about 75% um, at about one pixel so now when I press play, you're going to see that it applied that entire series of uh, unsharp masks to the entire photo uh, or video, I should say, at this point. All right, so that's one thing. Now, what we can also do is I like that these are being dropped in, but that's kind of, I don't know, typical of uh, ink being dropped into water. We can actually go to uh, the rotate canvas and rotate this all the way around 180 degrees so it looks like the ink is going up. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's go to image, um, let's go to adjustments, uh, and rotate canvas. Where are you? Uh, uh, image rotation. Here we go. 180 degrees. So it's going to ask me, do I want to convert this to a smart object first? Go ahead and con convert it to that smart object. It already treats it like a smart object anyway. So now when I press play, the ink is now going up. How cool is that? And it does that for the entire video. So let's go back to the very beginning where this fades in from black. Again, let's change our resolution to 25% so we can watch this a little bit in faster time. So now the ink is coming up instead of going down. So that's pretty cool. There's also some more things you can do with Photoshop, and I'll leave you with this one before uh, we get into a more advanced version um, later on. And in this version, um, what I want to do is just bring in one photograph. Very simply, bring in another photograph and put it on top of this series of, of uh, videos. So I'm going to bring in a photograph, just drag it and drop it right onto our video. Now it's going to come in almost like it would if it was a smart object. It's going to ask me to resize it. So I'm just going to size this up to make it match the rest of the video. Now beforehand, I made this beforehand, it's a PNG file of um, what looks like a, um, oh, you'll see it in a second here, but it's like a series of bubbles. Now if you look, it's in our video group. So because it's in this video group, what it did was it went over here on the very end and it won't be able to go on top of it until it's in its own video group. So we need to add a new video group. So we're just going to put new video group here. So now we have video group 2. And if you see over here in our layers palette, we now have a video group 2. And we can click on them individually. All right, so if I move that experiment 3 photo up into video group 2, watch what happens. On our timeline, it puts it above now. So now we can move that over to, say, over here. And then we can make that like this. So what this is is just it's a PNG file, and these background areas are transparent in the PNG file. But now when we press play, we can see uh, that this image that we've just put into this photo now overlays over top of the video. So you can see how creative you can get with this, and your possibilities are almost limitless with what you can do with video in Photoshop.
All right, so if we go ahead and press stop, we can change our resolution to something like 100% uh, to make it look a little bit better, and then we press play. So what we're really doing here is just putting a layer over top of our video. So Photoshop treats video just like it treats layers. You can put layers on top of one another. You see how thick this stack could get. All right. Uh, when we start doing some really intense video editing um, in the next one, you'll see just how how crazy we can get with video here in Photoshop. So again, this is your brief intro to, to video in Photoshop. I don't want to inundate you with too much at a time. Now, if you wanted to create this video and render it, that's what we have to do now. We have to get it off of, of Photoshop and into its own file. We're going to go over down here and then click that button, and that's our render button. It's going to ask us to render the video. How do we want to render that video? So we can we can decide what name we want it to be. Uh, we can decide the quality of it, and then you can go ahead and press render. Now it also has settings in here for YouTube. So if you know you're going to put this up on YouTube or um, Vimeo, it's got settings already in here for Vimeo and YouTube. So all you have to do is click on those and you're good to go. And then when you press render, it goes. Now some videos take a very long time to render. All right, like uh, one video I did was I think five minutes long and it took about 20 minutes to render. So just keep that in consideration when you're working with video in Photoshop. It takes quite some time to render. So I'm Blake Rudis with EverydayHDR.com and HDRInsider.com and this was how to create a compelling video in Photoshop. Pretty cool.